This is the Chieftain Armoured Troop Plastic Box Set for British Forces in Team Yankee. This box set contains five plastic FV4201 Chieftain main battle tanks, as well as one plastic tank commander sprue, one decal sheet, and four Team Yankee unit cards. On the back of the box is the exploded assembly diagram. These are quite simple tanks with just a few details like searchlight mountings and stowage racks. Note that there are options to model the commander's hatch open or closed, and two turret options, a standard turret and the still brew up armoured turret. The box also has a picture of a completed chieftain tank from the set, finished in the standard post-war British vehicle scheme of green and black. If we open the box there's a decal sheet. This is limited to some British national flags, vehicle numbers and formation signs. Six tank crew figures are supplied in a variety of poses, some with berets and others with helmets. These are resin, not plastic, so you'll need to secure these with superglue, not plastic cement. Next come the unit cards. First up is the Armoured Squadron HQ card. This has vehicle and unit stats on one side with points costs, special rules and formation information on the reverse. There are two Chieftain Armoured Troop cards. These have the vehicle and unit stats on the front with points costs, special rules and options on the back. The last card is the 3rd Armoured Division Formation card. This shows what units can be fielded as part of this force and on the back is a listing of support units including artillery, anti-aircraft weapons, helicopters and even fixed wing support from a Harrier close support flight. Let's look at the plastic. The kit parts for each tank come on two sprues. This larger sprue has the two turrets, the standard and the up armoured still brew turret. Next is the upper hull. There's good sharp detail here. The one piece tracks also have good detail, particularly the tracks and road wheels. Note this tank uses the Horstman coil spring suspension system with three bogies per side, each mounting a pair of road wheels. This arrangement limited cross-country performance. Rounding out this sprue with the side skirts, lower hull and hull rear. The second sprue is smaller. It has the L11A5 120mm rifled main gun, as well as hatches, searchlights and turret stowage bins. There are also some jerry cans and other stowage. Again, Battlefront have included two Commander's machine guns here, a spare in case you break this part getting it off the sprue. Let's start the build with the hull. Snip the hull pieces from the sprue. Be careful trimming some of the sprue gates here as they're close to the detail on the stowage boxes. Also clip off the track pieces. They will also need some minor cleanup, but there's no mould lines here so it doesn't take long. Glue the track pieces to the lower hull. These are keyed to guide fitting and the keying is different on the left and right so you can't get this wrong. Nice engineering. Next comes the rear hull piece. Glue this into place. Now fit the upper hull piece. Make sure to hold the front of this together to ensure a good join without gaps on the hull front. The final pieces on the hull are the side skirts. Snip these off the sprue. There are lots of guides here to ensure correct fitting with the hull. A nice touch is support posts on the hull between the road wheels to help anchor the skirts and place them at the proper angle. The hull is now finished, it's looking great. There is plenty of strong detail here, particularly on the engine deck, but even extending to the fittings on the side skirts. This will look great when it's painted. Moving on to the turret construction, I start by snipping off the main turret pieces. I'm building the standard turret without the Stilbrew armour package. Fit the upper and lower turret pieces together. There is a locating slot and post at the front of the turret under the gun, but not anywhere else. So take a moment here to make sure the parts are correctly aligned before the glue dries. Then fit the rear plate for the turret stowage bin. Chieftain has a prominent IR searchlight on the turret side and this piece is next. Then the left and right turret stowage racks can be attached and the commander's coupler and MG can be fitted. I'm not using magnets so the plastic post should be added underneath the turret. Make sure this piece is dried completely before placing the turret on the hull. Finally the long L11 rifle gun can be glued into place. Make sure to get this the right way up with the muzzle reference system at the top. That's the build completed and here's the end result. Generally the detail is sharp. My only real comment would be the smoke discharges on the turret. They're a little bit soft and not shaped quite right. This is probably a compromise to simplify single piece plastic moulding. 
It isn't a deal breaker, but something to be aware of. Otherwise, this is a great kit of this old Cold War workhorse. When it was introduced into service in 1966, the Chieftain was the most formidable main battle tank in the world, with a powerful gun and heavy armour protection. It replaced the venerable Centurion tank, which had been the mainstay of British armoured forces after the Second World War. There were concerns that Centurion wasn't really capable of dealing with heavy Soviet tanks like the IS-3 and the T-54-55 series, and Britain had fielded the Conqueror heavy tank to counter these. Conqueror's heavy 120mm gun was designed to provide long-range anti-tank support to Centurions. As Centurions were upgraded and upgunned, the need for a specialist heavy tank to support them declined. Work on developing a replacement for Centurion started in the late 1950s. The L11 120mm rifled gun was chosen as the main armament for the new tank, which also featured heavily sloped hull and turret armour. The driver's position was reclined in order to lower the profile of the hull. Initially the main gun was aimed using a Marconi fire control system, incorporating a 50 caliber ranging gun ballistically matched to the main gun rounds. In the 1970s this was replaced by a laser rangefinder. Upgraded tanks can be identified by the fitting for the muzzle reference system on the end of the barrel, which is included on the battlefront kits. Chieftain mounts a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun with another 7.62mm machine gun at the commander's position. Night vision was provided by a large IR searchlight on the turret side, but this was replaced in the 1980s with TOGS, a thermal imaging system. Smoke grenade launchers are fitted to the turret. This image also shows the steel brew armour added to the turret. This was an armour package of steel titanium alloy sandwiched with rubber sheets, which increased armour thickness and reduced penetration effects. Unlike Centurion, Chieftain wasn't exported, and remained the main battle tank for British forces until introduction of the third generation Challenger in 1983. Let's look at the Chieftain's stats in Team Yankee. The armoured troop card identifies it as a tank unit and includes bazooka skirts and infrared. Skill, assault and remount skills are 3 plus, meaning the troops are well trained and aggressive. Courage, morale and counter attack are all 4 plus. The Chieftain troop is hit on a 4 plus. Front armour is 17, side is 6 and top is 2. Given this is a second generation tank without composite armour, this is pretty good armour protection. Taking the still brew armour option increases the front armour to 18. However, the side armour is thin enough that you won't want to get flanked. The bazooka skirt special rule means side armour is 10 against high explosive anti-tank weapons. Tactical move is 10 inches or 25 centimetres, terrain dash is 14 inches or 35 centimetres, cross country dash is 20 inches or 50 centimetres, and road dash is 24 inches or 60 centimetres. The stabiliser special rule means Chieftain can make a tactical move of up to 14 inches, but suffers a plus one penalty to hit for the extra movement. The standard tank has a cross of 2+, plus, but the extra weight of Stillbrew brings this up to a 3+, plus, so keep Stillbrew Chieftains out of difficult terrain, as you have a one-third chance of getting stuck. The L11 rifled gun has a range of 40 inches or 100 centimetres, with a halted rate of fire of 2 and a moving rate of fire of 1. This means you can put out more firepower from a stationary position, making this a strong tank in defence. Anti-tank is a respectable 22, and a firepower of 2 plus means this gun packs a wallop. The brutal rule means infantry teams and unarmoured tank teams must re-roll successful saves. The laser rangefinder removes the normal to hit penalty, meaning there is no to hit penalty for engaging targets over 16 inches. The L11 can fire smoke rounds. This is useful for protection and for masking parts of a unit so the remaining tanks can concentrate their fire. This can be a good way to divide and conquer larger Soviet formations. The last special rule is infrared. This allows the unit to roll two dice for night visibility and choose the highest score. This determines night visibility range, but Chieftain still suffers to hit penalties for night and smoke, unlike the thermal imaging rule for the M1 Abrams. So for a 1960s design, Chieftain can hold its own on the Team Yankee battlefield. Even after upgrade programs in the 70s and 80s, its technology is a half step behind the M1 and Leopard. Side armour protection is poor, so make sure to face front, avoid being flanked, and use other units to protect your flanks. The moving rate of fire penalty also means this tank is best at long-range gunnery rather than a more mobile battle. Iron Maiden is a great expansion to the Team Yankee forces, 
and Chieftain is a big part of that until Challenger comes along. Apart from some minor issues like the soft moulding on the smoke grenade launchers, detail is strong and this is a beautiful kit. I need to go build a Stillbrew version now to get that extra point of armour protection.